Okay, thank you, Jorg. Um, so yeah, as a disclaimer, uh, you will immediately notice that I have a French accent. Uh, so this will be a second talk this morning. Um, okay, so I'm Pierre Chenier. I'm working as an operation engineer in the SRE division of Criteo. Um, and in this talk, I will try to share with you some uh, insights uh, into our deployment and uh, operation regarding our Mesos infrastructure. So I, I will be uh, quite fast because uh, there are a lot of interesting and technical content in this talk, uh, but I will share the slides just after and you can come by our booth uh, if you want to have some uh, details. Uh, so first, a bit of context uh, regarding our company. Um, so at Criteo, uh, our business, oh, we, we are operating the ad tech industry and our business is basically to uh, predict the most uh, relevant ad for the right user at the right moment. Um, and since uh, for the, the last 12 years, uh, we've managed to do that pretty uh, efficiently. And right now we are able to present some interesting metrics uh, regarding that. Um, like we have 30 uh, offices around the world. We reach every month 1.2 billion uh, distinct users on the internet. We operate in seven different da data centers around the world uh, and uh, we are hosting more than 20,000 uh, physical servers in these data centers. Uh, we are also constrained uh, because of our business. Uh, since we are doing performance marketing, we have some services that have to uh, respond under 10 milliseconds. And this is quite a challenge to operate uh, uh, such uh, infrastructure. So at Criteo, like in uh, many other companies, we are always uh, transitioning. Uh, and from an SRE perspective, uh, transitioning uh, means four different things uh, at that time. Uh, the first thing is hardware. We try uh, in the long run to improve our TCO regarding the hardware, uh, meaning that we um, see the resiliency more at a data center level uh, rather than at the server level. Uh, regarding the OS stack, we uh, starting a we started a big uh, switch hist historically from uh, Windows-based infrastructure to something more Linux-oriented. Really in runtime, uh, we've introduced a bit more diversity. We are historically based on uh, the .NET uh, ecosystem. Uh, and uh, last but not least, regarding our platform, we aim to improve our ability to deliver self-service uh, uh, self to our uh, end user which are uh, basically internal users. And what we've learned so far at doing this transition is that um, to get a stable and a maintainable service, you have to make its component uh, uh, simple and highly modular. And this is why we chose uh, Mesos initially. So I won't detail on the why Mesos is uh, simple and modular because there are uh, a lot of interesting talks regarding these aspects in this conference. Uh, but I could also mention that it's uh, highly self-sufficient uh, in the sense that you can uh, run containers in many different ways. So just think about it. Uh, in our case, we are running container, uh, image-less containers, meaning that we don't fully rely on the um, image-based uh, isolation, but you can do it if you want. You can also use different runtimes. And uh, we've learned yesterday that we will soon be able to uh, maybe run VMs on top of Mesos, so that's really amazing. Um, so where are we at Criteo right now? Uh, we've started a small uh, POC almost two years ago, and right now we host 600 agents on our seven data centers. We are running more than 150 production applications, and this thanks to the two, two generalist framework, which are Marathon and Apache Aurora. And we will try in the near future to introduce a machine learning oriented workload and to move really huge blocks from our legacy infrastructure to the uh, new uh, Mesos infrastructure. So what does this uh, imply from uh, operational uh, point of view? Uh, I mean, the SRE vision. Um, here I wanted to highlight a few points which are really important if you want to move from, like we did, from a small POC to something a bit more production grade. 
So the first thing is that you have to automate everything. In our case, uh, we are operating a huge legacy infrastructure, which is composed of uh, more than one, uh, uh, sorry, 11,000 uh, of Windows machine plus the Mesos infrastructure. So it's absolutely impossible if we don't automate everything that we uh, actually make something work. Um, so in our case, we are using Chef to do that as a config management tool. So, uh, okay, with config management, you can uh, deploy things, etc. But uh, it's not the only thing we are doing, actually. We perform also complex uh, operations using uh, these tools. Like, if we want to reboot a machine, if we want to pixie reboot a machine, if we want to um, upgrade an OS, if we want to upgrade our Mesos cluster, like we do here from 1.3 to 1.4, um, if I want to scale up my infrastructure, we do all of that using uh, Chef, thanks to uh, internal development. So second aspect is uh, you have to configure your infrastructure uh, defensively uh, for predictability. Um, so the first task for an operator to do that is to uh, basically do a map, uh, identify your fault domains. And these are mostly uh, related to your uh, network topology in your different data centers. Uh, a second aspect is that you have to enforce uh, limits uh, for your task. Uh, I won't detail on CPU and memory because there have been uh, some interesting blog posts around that, but do you care about your disk and uh, about your the Unix user that makes your task running on your Mesos infrastructure? If not, you should. Uh, because that's also part of uh, the predictability of your infrastructure. And last but not least, you should perform backup and also try to restore them. You don't want like me to uh, be in this situation on a Sunday afternoon when you're on call, being uh, called by someone in your company, saying, hey, uh, we had an incident, you have to restore everything. And you end up with this kind of errors. So please, uh, try to do backup and to restore them. And thanks to this US, we will have apparently amazing primitive uh, coming for uh, doing that automatically. A third aspect in our case uh, was our ability to move uh, smoothly from a service from the legacy infrastructure to the uh, Mesos cluster. And to do that, we've uh, introduced a service discovery component uh, using console on every single machine in our data centers so that we are able to uh, perform smooth transition from the legacy to the uh, new infrastructure. But with the service discovery component, you can do a lot more. Um, we are using that also to, uh, for example, provision load burns, uh, etc. Uh, so this is clearly a key component if you want to uh, envisage uh, transitioning from a legacy to a new system. A fourth aspect is about uh, observability. Um, don't forget that transitioning from a legacy infrastructure which is uh, statically partitioned, um, purely hardware based to something relying on containers, um, it's something completely new for your end user uh, if they used to run on the such uh, old systems. Why? Because uh, historic historically, there are instances were uh, completely static. They didn't move. Uh, they had monitoring that wa uh, was maybe dependent on the company, but uh, 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 statically configured. But now, uh, apps move continuously. Instances are reloaded because of uh, operator doing something, uh, app being restarted, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so you have to. Uh, get some insight from your platform. And here I wanted to uh, highlight some very interesting components and uh, metrics that are available in the Mesos um, using uh, different Mesos components. Uh, so, for example, a few uh, metrics regarding networking and disk IOs. Um, there is an another aspect which is important, is uh, it's tracing. For some purpose, you may want to uh, be able to debug your app and have uh, the lowest possible level of uh, insight. And to do that, you can perform tracing. Uh, 
in Mesos, you have a lot of awesome components, and one of them is the perf isolator. Using that, you can, you can um, retrieve some traces, and these are awesome uh, if you want to perform uh, low-level investigations. In our case, we're also working to introduce LTTNG as a tracing solution. And for those of you uh, who are able to attend uh, to the tracing summit, uh, there are some of our colleagues uh, who present this uh, integration. So the last aspect I wanted to mention is networking. Uh, networking in our case was uh, a really complex aspect. Um, so our first intent was to provide uh, services around networking, like automatic pr uh, DNS provisioning, timeout profile, ability to manage sticky cookies, uh, potentially uh, uh, automatic TLS configuration, etc. Uh, but we faced uh, two categories of issues. Uh, the first one was about our load balancing stack. Uh, so we are using HAProxy, which is an awesome product. Uh, this community is uh, bringing a lot of addition in the, in the product, and so you, you are able to perform almost everything at the, uh, the uh, layer 7, real HTTP. Um, but the reloads wa were not that uh, stable. In our case, we were either in a situation in which we introduced uh, resets at the TCP level or uh, purely n uh, latency spikes. So I encourage those of you who are using uh, HAProxy to upgrade to the latest version because this community has done a lot of interesting work and so that these uh, issues are now fixed. Another aspect is uh, regarding predictability. Again, uh, we've noticed that we were uh, quite frequently uh, subject to the noisy neighbor issue which is quite common when you're doing uh, container-based uh, systems. And so we did a lot of investigation regarding that, and in our case, we uh, ended up uh, implementing uh, something around NetCLS, which is uh, something interesting uh, from the, the kernel, which is managed using C group, and which allow you to basically classify your different flows and to apply QoS rule on it. Okay, so here it was supposed to be the uh, fun slide of the talk, uh, like a few incidents we had uh, during the last months. So first one uh, regarding DC outages. Uh, so I was called by someone again on Sunday afternoon. I don't know why. Always on Sunday afternoon. July was sunny, etc. And okay, someone told me, "Hey Pierre, uh, so we have one DC starting to burn." Uh, so basically, every, every server has been uh, shut down, and you have to help us uh, to restart the whole infrastructure. Uh, and what I can tell you is that it was really easier to restart something uh, Mesos-based and container-based compared to our legacy. Trust me, we spent a lot of time uh, uh, performing that. Uh, so clearly, this revealed that uh, a Mesos-based solution uh, bring a lot to a company like our. Uh, I also wanted to mention some uh, disaster recovery scenarios such as uh, Marathon application deleted worldwide. So we had one of our users, which basically was privileged for some reason, uh, tried to call some APIs and ended up in destroying every application on our infrastructure except his home. <laughs> so this is uh, this was an ACL concern, uh, and so I encourage you to be uh, uh, careful about these uh, problematics. Uh, you should either perform um, multi-tenancy or be really careful about isolating your different uh, API paths. So for us, what's left to answer? Um, so the, the, our first uh, concern in the, 
is regarding isolation. Uh, clearly, we, uh, we aim to improve our isolation regarding network and IOS uh, aspects, and disk IOS. Um, since we will also try to move uh, complex and uh, latency-driven components, we're also looking in uh, using CPU sets potentially to have more predictability in our, uh, on our components. Um, there is also something that will require a lot of investment from, from us, uh, and this is basically described uh, by the graph here. Uh, you can notice that the usage uh, versus reservation uh, between the usage and the reservation, there is uh, quite a gap. And so in the long run, we've we will probably have to uh, invest into um, the notion of revocability of our subscription and why not potentially bin packing? Uh, because using bin packing, you can not only reclaim hardware, but potentially, if you are able to do it, uh, you can also reclaim electrical power. Just imagine uh, if you are able to defragment your cluster by packing the task, uh, you can envisage completely st uh, stopping some of your servers if they are doing nothing. So if you have a correct deal with your energy supplier and your data center, you can potentially save some resources. A last aspect is about maintenance primitives. Uh, as you may have understood, uh, we are doing some complex operation with our uh, IT automation tool, like Reboot, etc. And we would like to anticipate more this operation by uh, reclaiming resources and uh, inform the different frameworks that we will do something, and at some point they have to move uh, their task. Okay, so this slide was about uh, collaboration in the company. Um, and it was to mention that if uh, you provide a good level of services and a good level of collaboration between uh, SRE teams and software uh, department in your company, you, get, you can get awesome contribution. And this is one of the good examples um, because one of our engineers in the software department uh, noticed that by trying to move um, a .NET based application on top of Mesos, he observed uh, weird behaviors regarding uh, the sizing of his uh, thread pools. Uh, and basically, this guy managed to introduce the support of CPU shells and CFS into the .NET CLR, which is basically the equivalent of the JDK, the JDK in the um, .NET ecosystem. So clearly, uh, collaboration inside the company gives you a lot of value, and uh, exchanging around uh, this aspect with your developers uh, can bring you a lot of added value. OK, so that's all. Uh, if you want to know more, because this was a bit technical and uh, I was quite fast, uh, faster than uh, uh, was expected, uh, feel free to come by our booth. Uh, we can uh, detail a lot around that. And also, I wanted to mention that we are hiring, so if you want to work uh, in an amazing hiring department in either uh, Paris or in the US, uh, feel free. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>